The Shogun Iemochi is now dead. Supporters of the Shogunate were understandably shaken to their core. A successor was naturally on everyone's mind, and that successor could only be Yoshinobu. However, you'd think he'd be eager to take such a prestigious role. He wasn't. Those close to him had to urge him to take on the role, and he made sure to let everyone know that he very well might turn the position down. He did agree to take on the role as head of the main branch of the Tokugawa clan. Going forward, he would be known as Tokugawa Yoshinobu instead of Hirosubashi Yoshinobu. Yoshinobu instead, for the time being, took on the title of Naidaijin, or Inner Minister. In this position, he had undefined power. With his new position, he took on the task of reforming the Bokufu, or government, taking many men from the Hido Subashi family and placing them in positions deemed to be important. The rest of 1866 would be geared towards these small reforms. On January 10th, 1867, Yoshinobu finally accepted the position, and he was installed as the new shogun. Just six days later, on the 16th of January, Emperor Komei became bedridden. The imperial court then announced a few days later that the emperor had contracted smallpox. The emperor's condition then got better, right before getting much worse. On January the 30th, the emperor Komei died. Poison was now on everyone's mind, just as it had been with the previous shogun's death. It was suspected at the time that Iwakura Tomomi was the culprit. He was a former statesman who had been exiled from the royal court for his moderation in 1862. And in 1866, from his house in a small village north of Kyoto, he had written negative comments about the government. And parts seemed defamatory against the emperor's character. Since then, guards had been watching his place quite closely. Now, there's some question amongst historians on whether he did actually have something to do with Emperor Komei's death. But either way, Iwakura did benefit from his death. On February 13th, 1867, Emperor Komei's son, 14-year-old Prince Sache, was officially the successor and was enthroned. Because of his age, the policy was to have him depend on his council for decision-making. From February to March, any officials that had been dismissed or exiled were then allowed to return back to court. Iwakura was also allowed to go to the capital, just not own a home there. He then contacted the Satsuma reformists to think about fighting the shogunate. Chosu was still looked at negatively at this time, by the way. For Yoshinobu, well, he was doing his internal reforms. There was, of course, the military reforms under the eyes of the French representative Leon Roche. At the beginning of 1867 in Yokohama, the School of the Three Arms was open and had French instructors. In June, the School of Officers of the Three Arms, but by the way, the Three Arms were infantry, cavalry, and artillery. At the end of the year, the Shogun's army had 12,000 modern infantrymen, four regiments, and one cavalry regiment. Western languages and sciences were also being explored at a rate never before seen. During April 1867, Japan was also part of the Paris Exposition Universelle, the exposition being a huge fair, drawing in about 15 million visitors, allowing nations to showcase their culture and newest inventions. The shogunate's representation was led by the shogun's very own brother, Tokugawa Akitake. They displayed the different arts that Japan offered, these arts, set in a pavilion built on the spot, would draw the eyes of several Europeans, including the artist Vincent van Gogh, who was a bit of a collector of ukiyo-e, or woodblock prints. Interesting enough, though, representatives from Satsuma were also there. They had secured a section of the exhibition and labeled it from the Duke of Satsuma, King of the Ryukyu. Clearly, meant to separate them from the shogunate's representation. The shogunate's delegation would then have to intervene to have the Satsuma display incorporated into their own. 
This was a great example of what was to come for the country of Japan. While the Tokugawa shogunate was technically in control, the country was massively divided. Another great example was that Saigo Takamori was making more political gains for the Satsuma in the Osaka and Kyoto region. He was in contact with Iwakura Tomomi, an imperial court noble, to get a place for himself on the imperial court. While leaving Okubo Tochimichi and Komatsu Tarawaki to consolidate Satsuma's position in the regions. He then traveled back to Kagoshima to get his lord to go to Kyoto with an army. He then went to Tosa, and then, after some discussion with Yamanoichi Toyoshige's, well, he got his word that he would go to Kyoto. Next, he would go to Uwajima and convince the lord there, Date Munanari, to travel to the imperial capital. Komatsu Tarawake had by this time arranged a meeting with Matsudara Yoshinaga at Fukui. Saigo also made sure to send those that he trusted to Chosu to let them know to not take offense at this gathering of daimyo. Remember, they were still considered an outlaw province, and their lord would not be able to attend. While you may think that this gathering of daimyo at the imperial capital would make Yoshinobu nervous, it did not. Yoshinobu had his position as head of the government, confirmed as the leader of the government by the foreign representatives. Previously, he had tried to get the imperial court to give him the permission to open up Hyogo as a trade port. He was told to consult the daimyo, though. After this, he met with the foreign representatives, who really, really liked him. The British diplomat Ernest Satow would describe Yoshinobu as the most aristocratic looking Japanese I've ever seen. A fair complexion, with a high forehead and well cut nose. Such a gentleman. Yoshinobu's meeting with the British is said to have gone deep into the night, with whiskey poured for all those that were in attendance. They liked the shogun quite a bit. It was just after this that Shimazu Hitsumitsu, the lord of Satsuma, entered into Kyoto on May 15th with around 7,000 men. On the 18th came Date Munanari, and the 19th came Matsudari Yoshinaga. The last of the daimyo to enter the capital was Yamanoichi Toyoshige on June 3rd. Two weeks later, Tokugawa Yoshinobu received the daimyo at the Nijo Palace. He started the meeting by telling them that the meeting with the foreign powers had gone really well. Hisamitsu responded by calling for the Chosu to be pardoned. And Yamanoichi Toyoshige then advised the shogun that all power should be returned to the emperor. Yoshinobu tactically pretended not to hear and ended the meeting in a good mood. On June 21st, the shogun was happy to see that everyone except Toyoshige had paid a visit, and they all seemed to have a different opinion on what had been discussed. It seems that he submits had struck the rest of the daimyo as arrogant. When the imperial court summoned the shogun and the daimyo, only two showed, Date Munenari and Matsudara Yoshinaga. Essentially, Yoshinobu had won out over the daimyo. After a discussion during the days of June 25th and the 26th, the imperial court had come to two decisions. One, the port of Hyogo would open on January 1st, 1868. Two, the court would consider future pardons of Chosu. These were just considerations though and not actual pardons. This was effectively nothing. And a complete win for the shogun. Toyoshige would leave Kyoto on the 28th upset at the results, but interesting enough, he was actually more irritated at Shimizu Hitsumits more than anything else. This would create a wedge between Satsuma and the Tosa daimyo. However, Saigo Takamori would still work with Sakamoto Ryoma. This kept the Tosa Satsuma connection alive, and by July 23rd, the two domains had signed a contract, the terms being striving towards an imperial government, equality between the two provinces, treaties with the foreigners to be revised, and the daimyo would have a share in this new government's power. Saigo Takamori would then communicate these terms to the Chosu. The Chosu at this point wanted civil war. Those in Tosa, however, didn't. 
Sometimes, though, it's simply unavoidable. Okay, guys. Um, I, like, th that's the end of the video. I'm actually on the battlefield right now doing research for the next uh, video. Uh, slash that like button. Uh, made a great video on a, a Japanese uh, submarine largest in World War II. Uh, you should check that out. Um, okay, yeah, see you next time.